liked 347 stroker forts? Who likes modified 347 stroker forts? Who likes modified 347 stroker forts with boost? Let's get going. In this video, we're definitely not going to run the wrong cam, but we are going to take a look at a 347 Ford in four different configurations. That's right, four. Mild combination with stock 5 liter heads, stock 5 liter cam, and an OG GT40 intake. Then we're going to run boost on that combination from a Vortex Supercharger. Then we're going to modify the NA configuration with heads, cam, and intake to replace the stock stuff and the GT40. Then finally, we're going to add the Vortex Supercharger back to the modified configuration. So that's four configurations. Let's get going. To run our comparison between bolt-ons and boost, and then bolt-ons and boost, which we know is probably going to be the best combination, we put together a 347 test motor. Our 347 test motor started out with a production 5 liter late model hydraulic roller block, and we installed a 3.4 inch stroker crank, a set of 5.4 inch forged rods, and a set of forged flat top pistons with valve reliefs to allow us to run, you know, enough camshaft on this, which we would put a, put a pretty healthy camshaft in this combination. Now, we also had a good oiling system, a Morosa oil pan and pump and windage tray and all that stuff. So we had a good combination to run this thing up, you know, to a reasonable RPM. And obviously with the blower, our concern was more about the block than any RPM possibility. So we put together a kind of stockish configuration. And by that, I mean, <laughs> I didn't have a 5 liter HO upper and lower intake manifold to run on this. So I was forced to install a GT40 intake, but still GT40 stuff, you know, old school tubular stuff was really cool. The GT40 was fed with a 70 millimeter AccuFab throttle body. Again, old school stuff, so it was pretty cool. We also topped the 347 with a set of stock E7TE heads and a, and a stock five liter stick camshaft. So mild cam, stock heads, a GT40 intake. It's as close as we could get to being it <laughs> stock. I mean, after all, it was already a 347. But as we'll see from the power output, the stock heads and stock cam really limited power production, even though this was a 347. So run in that configuration with a fast XFI management system and a set of long tube inch and three quarter hooker headers for a Fox chassis. Our 347 produced 306 horsepower and about 400 foot pounds of torque. The torque number was good, obviously, for the 347, where the heads and cam would allow the thing to <laughs> make at least reasonable power, or reasonable torque. But they surely limited power production out at the top because we were only making 300 horsepower, which is kind of about what we make with a combination on a 306. We just or a 302 or 306, but we make it a little bit higher out. But th those heads and cam kind of want to make that kind of power output. So on our 347, the first thing we did was install a Vortex supercharger. We wanted to run boost on the stock, on the stock, on the stockish configuration, and then do the mods and then run boost again. So we installed a Vortex S trim supercharger, which is capable of supporting way more power than we're going to make with either one of these combinations. But we installed the Vortex supercharger with a six and 0.75 inch crank pulley and a 3.8 inch blower pulley so we weren't spinning it very fast about 37,000 rpm at um, 6,000 rpm or engine speed so with this produced a boost curve rising from about two and a half pounds at our load in point of 3300 up to about eight pounds of boost out at 5700 which is as, as far as we ran this thing because we did have a rising boost curve but we had a falling power curve because we had a stock cam and stock heads on this thing so here's what happened when we ran the thing boosted in our stockish configuration we ran the vortex with our stock heads and stock cam as you can see we made 421 horsepower so we increased the power output by 115 horsepower uh, peak torque checked in at 462 foot pounds and as I said this is at a peak boost of about eight pounds on our stockish motor so blowers do what blowers do it did add power and, and it did what it was supposed to do it had a rising boost curve and it definitely increased the power output of this of our original 300 horsepower up to 421 horsepower now we could go more with more boost if we you know spun this thing faster or maybe put in air to water intercooler on and stuff and all that stuff would help but what this thing really needs was to be modified, meaning different heads, cam, and possibly intake. So let's check that out. After running the Vortex Supercharger on our 347 with the stock head, stock cam, and GT40 intake, it was time to 
upgrade our 347 and give the thing what it really needed. It just basically needed more airflow, more cam timing, and a better intake manifold. So to provide that, we swapped out the stock E7TE iron heads for a set of aluminum RHS heads. The RHS heads were as cast with 200cc intake ports, and they flowed about 275 or so CFM. So they were a good upgrade compared to a stock set of E7TE iron heads, which probably flow 155 or 160 CFM on a good day. So it's a big step up. We also stepped up in cam timing. Obviously, the stock camshaft was pretty mild. So we stepped up to a fairly good-sized cam for this 347. It was the XFI-236 cam, which you know is a good one. This is this thing is 579 lift, a 236, 248 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And it's a good cam, especially for a 347. After all, it is an XFI stroker cam, and we had a stroker forward, so it was a good match. We also replaced the GT40 intake with an Edelbrock RPM2 intake, which we know is better than the GT40, and it certainly makes more power up top. But as we'll see, the combination of the heads, cam, and intake will shift power higher in the RPM range compared to the stock stuff, but that's kind of to be expected. So let's take a look and see what happened what, uh, with these modifications, see how they change the shape of the power curve. So here's what happened after we installed the new heads cam and intake. The power output jumped dramatically up to 449 horsepower. So we increased the power output of our NA combination by almost 50% going from near 300 horsepower to near 450 horsepower. So it was a pretty big jump in power, but as you can see, it wasn't without a trade-off. I mean, take a look down here in the 3,500 RPM range. We lost, you know, oh, what's that? 25, 35 foot-pounds of torque. So there was a trade-off with that much cam timing and that biggest cylinder head and, and maybe the intake also, but that's to be expected. We did see a big jump in power and as we'll see, when we add the Vortex Supercharger to this new combination, <laughs> definitely good things are going to happen. But before that could happen, we had to improve the power output of our NA combination. And the other thing that helps this out, as we'll see with a centrifugal supercharger, is we are now making peak power at a much higher RPM. Peak power occurred 62, 6300 RPM, which produced the same one. And it was fairly flat, even all the way out past 6500, which bodes well for the centrifugal supercharger because as we run that thing faster and faster, it supplies more and more airflow and more and more boost. So we have a rising boost curve and a slightly rising power curve, which is exactly what we're gonna see. So let's check that out. After taking our 347 and upgrading from the stock cam and stock heads and GT40 intake to the RHS heads and XFI camshaft and RPM2 Edelbrock EFI intake, it was time to add boosts. Now, that's the best thing you can do to any motor, so <laughs> that's exactly what we did. And what we did was we added the same Vortex Supercharger that we ran in this mild stockish configuration. We ran the same Vortex S-Trim, same pulley combination. It was non-intercooled. We basically didn't change anything. I wanted to find out when we put this Vortex Supercharger system on the stock motor and then put it on the modified motor. I just wanted to find out what the change was without making any other changes. You know, one change is obviously enough. <laughs> so here's what happened when we put the supercharged combination or the supercharger on our modified combination. Now in red, so the blue, this was our stockish configuration, the green, our modified NA, and then now the red, our supercharged configuration, and it made a peak, <laughs> the peak power output of 666 horsepower out here at 6,300 RPM. We didn't rev it any higher, although it certainly was traveling, <laughs> increasing the power output rapidly at each 100 RPM. So it was on its it was on a mission, basically. It was on its way into the, you know, we already passed the block splitting territory of this thing, because this was a production 5 liter late model hydraulic roller block. But this thing, I think, was on a mission, and the, and the supercharger would certainly support, you know, about another 100 horsepower or more, so it had plenty of capacity left. We had a nice flat torque curve above 550 foot-pounds from 5,200 all the way out to 6,300. So that was nice and flat. Good things were happening. The interesting thing is that since we took the supercharger and just ran it on the modified version with the same pulley combination, we uh, had naturally a drop in boost. The interesting thing is that we only dropped peak boost or the, the boost pressure on the modified combination from about eight pounds down to, you know, we only dropped it 
about a pound and a half, which really surprised me considering that we increased the power output by nearly 50%. I mean, we put a big camshaft in it, we put good sized cylinder heads on it, we put a better intake manifold on it, and picked up the power from around 300 horsepower to near 450 horsepower. Yet when we ran the supercharger with the same pulleys, it only dropped the boost by about a pound and a half. Now, because we revved it higher uh, on the modified version, because it was making peak power out higher, we actually made the same boost of eight pounds, but we did it out at 6,300 RPM and not at 5,700 RPM like we did with the, with the stock combination. So it just goes to show you, boost on a stock motor or on a mild 347 <laughs> as our test proof works well. But boost on a modified version, on a modified version that has good cylinder heads, good camshaft, good intake, is even better. And you make more power and you bring the boost down, which is why we modify motors to begin with, whether it's an LS or a big block Chevy, or in this case, a small block Ford. More power, more boost, all good stuff. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about the test on our 347 small block Ford? Here's the takeaway and here's what you should have learned. First of all, a 347 gets strangled when we equip it with factory 5 liter heads, a factory 5 liter camshaft, even though we added the super cool OG GT40 intake manifold. Now when we add boost to that, basically we're just multiplying what is there naturally aspirated. So adding the Vortex Supercharger did exactly what it was supposed to do. We improved the power output of our fairly mild 347. Now when we modified our NA motor with heads, cam, and intake, we improved the power output pretty dramatically. As a matter of fact, almost a 50% gain, which is pretty big. Here's what happened when we added boost to that. We just multiplied what was there, which means we had a lot more power. It was cool that we added the Vortex Supercharger with the same pulley configuration. The boost came down and the power went up, which is the best of both worlds. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Hope you like the testing. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. More cool stuff coming up.